Some other films that are wonderful is the film that is playing now called Before They Die. It's a film on a historical event about the Tul Tulsa race riots, um, Black Wall Street. And um, as you know, you know, it, it was just historically many of our communities have been devastated by racism economically. This was a thriving black township and um, you know obviously there was a race riot and they tore down the homes, burnt them down to the ground and um, so we're you know as the title suggests the film um, documents some of the survivors and we are fortunate to have Dr. Olivia Hooker who was about 92 years old, was the first African-American uh, female Coast Guard, U.S. Coast Guard and she's going to share her experience about what happened, how it has impacted her life, and hopefully the lessons that we can learn as a, a nation to avoid this happening again, um, and economically, you know, making sure that our communities are thriving, that there are laws um, that are, are protecting our businesses. Some people could not get over, but most people did. What do you see, looking at the psychological effect of having the government turn its back on its responsibility after allowing such harm to happen to people? What's the psychological effect that you saw from your pro professional position on black people at that time? And then do you see any of that continued psychological effect harming us today? Well, all of our parents would instead of talking about what happened last year, we talk about how can we make sure this doesn't happen again or happen to someone else. And I think that, that was what would carry us through because I was only six, so I thought that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness pertained to me. And I, couldn't believe when I woke up and I heard the bullets hit the house. I thought, you know, it was hell. But when my mother heard me say, how can it hail when the sun is shining brightly? She said, come with me. And she took me in the living room to peep through the blinds. And she said, you see that up there? That's a machine gun. And that's the captain of the machine gun and your country is shooting at you. I'm uh, Dr. Denise Clement. I'm the producer of Before They Die, which is a documentary that chronicles the journey of the survivors of the 1921 Tulsa race riot and their quest for justice. Uh, these are elderly survivors who've been waiting for over 90 years to get justice for an event that happened back in 1921. 42 square blocks of Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Greenwood District, uh, also known as Black Wall Street, was burned to the ground in less than 24 hours. 10,000 people became homeless overnight, an estimated 300 were killed. Um, and yet it's the worst race ride in the history of the country and most people have never heard of it. And there are people who were born and raised in Tulsa who didn't know about it or who don't hear about it in, until they've left Tulsa and come back. Um, one of the attorneys who's in the film didn't find out about it till he was a junior in college away from Tulsa. So the importance of the story is that it's American history that's not being told. I interviewed 22 survivors. The youngest was 85 at the time and the oldest was 102. And now Mr. Clark is 107. And he travels all over the world. Uh, but he was 18 at the time. So he can give you a very clear story, recollection, as to what happened compared to some of the other survivors who were children, young children at the time. Mr. Clark was 18, so the story that he's giving is, is very complete, very accurate, uh, very compelling. So he has traveled all around the country with us to uh, tell his story, to promote the film, and to help educate people about the Tulsa race riot. Um, Dr. Clement. You have, I'm sure, many, many projects on your list that you would like to work on. And as a creative person, I'm sure many people come to you with projects for you. What drew you to this particular project? Uh, this project 
it was very clear that this was um, living history. I mean, we had the survivors that we could talk to, that we could get their stories, and it was important that we record these stories because no one else was recording the stories. And there is an African proverb that says, until the lions get their own storyteller, right, right, all right, the stories right. will be about the hunters. Right, right, right. So our, our company's called Important Films, and we have a tagline of keeping our stories alive. And that was why we did it, because it, it needed to be preserved. So we actually have over 100 hours of film footage from the interviews that I did with the survivors uh, that we condensed down to 92 minutes so people will actually stay and watch. <laughs> but the, the survivors were very gracious in inviting us into their homes, sharing their stories, uh, letting me ask endless questions about uh, the Tulsa race riot and the destruction of Black Wall Street because it's not in the history books. It's not even taught in the schools in Tulsa. And it's Tulsa history. It's American history. We worked on this film for six years because we were following the court case. The survivors had a case against the city of Tulsa and the state of Oklahoma for being compensated for what they lost back in 1921. Now, everyone agrees that in 1921 they couldn't have gotten a fair trial. And in fact, there was a grand jury that said the victims brought it upon themselves to have their homes and businesses burned to the ground. And once the grand jury came out and said that, then the insurance company said, we don't have to pay all these claims. And so they received no compensation for what they lost, which was in the millions of dollars in 1921. I mean, that was what was in the newspapers, the millions of dollars of loss to the, to the community. I mean, homes were lost, businesses were lost, schools, hospitals. I mean, this was a very thriving community. The dollar circulated 36 times in this community, so it supported itself. It grew as a result of that support, and it was very prosperous, which is why uh, it was called Black Wall Street. How can we deal with the envy that people still have of what we have? Right. Because so much of it was envy, the fact they resented the fact that we had more than that. We're still dealing with a social racial hierarchy in which certain people at the top feel like they're always supposed to be at the top and other people look like us are always supposed to be at the bottom. Right. Yeah. How do we deal with the issue of free will? The fact that we should be able to choose where we want to go and how we want to get there, what we want to do once we get there, and how do we choose each other? At the end of the day, there's so much that could be learned from a catastrophe such as this, that we have to not wait for the public schools to show this film. Right. This film should be shown in our places of religion, our community centers, wherever we gather, our women organizations, we should be showing this film instead of waiting for the government to show what the government did wrong. Exactly. When do you think that's going to happen? It's not. So I think going back to what Roger Wareham said before, we have to step up our game and make sure that we say what we want and what we don't want. We need to support filmmakers like Dr. Clement so that she knows that we care about this film beyond just sitting here. We need to, as was pointed out by King Downey, we need to understand how we can use a social network to put protests together. We don't always just have to protest but we have to make the protest work beyond coming together for a moment and then going back home. And we have to do and complain. If we're gonna complain, then do something about it as well. It's not enough to just sit and say something is wrong. Right. We've gotta do something about it. And the respect that we need to learn from our elders, if we go back and actually ask our elders, what have you been through? Ask them, the conversation that we, that, that we were talking about having with Dr. Hooker, we also need to have with our family members because we've been through so much. And we need to understand in Sankofa, to understand our history, so we get a sense of what's going on in the present, and we can better plan for the future. And I thank you, Dr. Hooker, for thank you so much. The survivors alone were all very gracious people. Um, they were willing to share their stories with us and to let us bring their stories to film and, and to the country and the world. And that's what we have to do with, with the film is to educate people about the survivors and also about the Tulsa race riot because it's not being taught in schools.
And so our company's called Important Films with a tagline of keeping our stories alive, because if we don't do it, no one will.